All right, today we're gonna do an example of how to use diode mode to find a fault. This is an iPhone 7 Plus that's here for data recovery because it has no image. So let's start with a note on this one. Um, this has been to a prior repair shop. So it says, data recovery from saltwater damage. While on a seven day cruise ship, I was thrown into the saltwater pool and my iPhone 7 Plus was in my pocket. I put it in a bag of uncooked rice for the remainder of the trip, four days. Back home, I took it to a local repair shop. They cleaned off the mineral deposits. Unfortunately, they are unable to get the screen to work. So let's look here at this one. This is ee, salt water damage for sure. And the board looks pretty good actually, except for down at the bottom. So let's look under the microscope. So most of this board is okay. So there was uh, not very much. There's just a little bit of really minor liquid up here at the top. And then somebody has taken off the CPU shield, presumably done some kind of cleaning, soldered it back on. I'm going to leave it on there for now because it doesn't look like there's a whole bunch of water up in the top of the foam. If we look down here, we can see this sort of midsection right below the sim tray also looks pretty good. And then it's then the wheels start falling off. We've got a, a little bit of water there. I've cleared out this connector stuff since this problem is no image right now. It started when I got it this morning and looked at it with a VCC main short and the guy before me had taken off both backlight drivers and that's about all he did to troubleshoot a VCC main short. So we can see over here by uh, the TriStar chip that there doesn't look like there's a ton of water. So that's great, a little bit, but then here, oh, that is holy, holy salt water hell. So I cleared the VCC main short. Um, it was under chestnut and uh, this cap next to chestnut was also really bad. So both, there was a lot of corrosion under chestnut. So I've replaced chestnut and I put back on a backlight driver just because I thought it would be easier to put a backlight driver on than to try and split apart an iPhone 7 Plus screen just to be able to recover data. But it has no image and that's what brings us to diode mode. So what I did first was I looked at the schematic to understand how is image produced, where is image power and where is image data. And I found image power lines that come out of chestnut Despite the fact the chestnut area looks so horrible uh, over here, these caps, oh my God, they look, they look terrible. But for now, they are able to hold the voltage and I get normal voltage. I replaced some of the filters that were corroded and falling off the board um, with a wire just to, just to kind of rule out variables while trying to get data off of this phone. But I still have no image. So image power is present but I have no image. So what does that mean? That means somewhere on one of the many, many, many data lines, um, there's likely a problem. So how are you gonna find that? Data's ones and zeros. That's hard to, hard to pick up a signal on. So here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna use diode mode in the multimeter to try to figure out which image data line is really at fault. So um, I'm going to move this over so I can kind of see the chat. Is this the Crystal Pistol Pizza Palace? Did I talk about the Crystal Pistol Pizza Palace? That's a blast from the past. Um, so this is iPhone 7 Plus and uh, I notice that iPad power supplies badly crank up their voltage as RF flows through them to ground. What? Um, isn't the 7 7 plus waterproof honestly for salt water i think it held up pretty well you know other than the bottom of the phone it looks pretty good for for salt water okay so let's um let's see what we're going to do with this diode mode technique that i want to cover in this video using this phone as an example so here's the deal we could take the entire the entire motherboard if we wanted to we could uh, we could take off every single chip and we could measure the board itself 
to check what is the overall resistance to ground in a line. And that value should be the same or more or less the same between every iPhone 7 Plus motherboard. It's kind of like measuring a highway. You know, there's certain, you know, this this is going to be the same, this is going to be the same, the distance between this is going to be the same. It's an infrastructure measurement. The overall line's resistance to ground is a functional feature of each line on the entire device. Um, so what we can do, instead of measuring the actual resistance to ground with a multimeter, that is fine, and some people do that, but it takes a long time. And this is really tight clearance, so you have to get a probe on ground and get a probe on the line. You get to hold it there while the multimeter figures out and thinks and ranges until it figures out what the resistance, exact resistance is between those two points, and then you could write that number down. We're going to speed up and take a relative measure of the resistance in the line using a different method. So we're going to use diode mode. So what diode mode does is it sends a voltage out of one of the leads and then it measures to collect how much did it collect back and it uses that to sort of infer a relative resistance to ground in the line so same numbers that you would get um, high numbers mean i didn't get very back very much voltage the resistance is very high and a very low number would mean i collected back all of the voltage and so therefore the resistance um, is very low as long as you put one probe on ground and one probe on the line. Now you'll get a different reading if you put the red probe on the on ground and measure the, the you know how much voltage did you get back on the line versus if you put the black probe on the ground and then measure how much voltage did you get back. You're going to get opposite numbers. So just purely as convention, the numbers that seem easiest to interpret or read or on the right scale are using red probe on ground. We could have all use black probe on ground, but the, the world decided to use red probe on ground. So that's what we're going to, um, that's what we're going to do here. All right. Um, somebody's talking about earpieces. Uh, some people are telling me where they're from and none of that is relevant to diode mode in the iPhone 7 plus. So we will uh, take a look here. So I also have a good iPhone 7 Plus. So this is the uh, last iPhone 7 Plus that I recovered uh, yesterday. So I happen to have one that is that was recovered and is working. So I know that this board will produce an image. So this is my known good. And now in order to use diode mode super powerful, you have to have this known good in order for your measurements to make sense. So let's kind of do an example then. We'll put the two boards kind of next to each other. Here's the good board, here's the bad board. And let's take a couple of readings here at the LCD connector. So this is where image lines are gonna come through. So what we're gonna do is set the multimeter up for you guys to see, at least in theory. Oh, it's a it's a Halloween multimeter. That is not green in any way. All right, so let's see. Now you guys can get can get a little bit of a view on the analog <laughs> OBS multimeter. All right, so let's try this one. Let's do the top four lines here, just kind of for fun. All right, so I'm going to put my red, red, red. Here's here it is, red, red probe on ground. Any ground is fine. Red probe goes on ground. And then let's go to the connector and let's take this reading and this one comes up open line so it doesn't go anywhere. Open line is the same as ultimate resistance. There's no path at all. I got back absolutely no voltage. Number two is going to, at least in theory, give us a reading. And I hear the beep. 0. 0.466. Number three. I got to get through a little bit of junk to get my probe actually touching ground. Number three. Come on, three. All right, is three also, oh well, I don't feel like it should be. Let's find a different ground. Did my multimeter go to sleep? No, nope. okay, then we'll go with three is also open line. Number four. 0.476. And then we'll go ahead and do number five. Number five is 0.474. That is on the good board. Let's click over then and pull down the bad board. 
And now we're just going to compare. So we're, again, we're measuring and comparing between these two devices. Later, if we find a difference, we can look up, hey, what does that line do? If the line is open somewhere, inappropriately open, broken open, a trace is torn, a component, an inline component is knocked off, then we'll get a higher than normal diode mode reading. That's how this works. If the line is short to ground or even partial short to ground, we'll get a lower resistance to ground, a lower diode mode reading. And that's what makes diode mode such a powerful tool because we can just kind of go down these connectors and measure lots of lines all at once. The only drag is that we have to have those known good values. All right, so on the bad board, I'm going to stick my red probe on any ground and let's see if we get a match or not. All right, that first line is OL, just like it was on the good board. Second is 0.464. The other board was 0.47 something, I think. I already forgot. But close enough. That is, that is reasonably the same. Number three is OL, just open line, just as in the other board. Number four is 0.479. Seems like a match. And number five is 0.480. Also seems like a match. Now I'm going to show you something else that you can do if you're working on an iPhone. Now you can apply this technique, not just iPhones, but to any board, as long as you have that known good. You can probe around and find any difference in diode mode, and that will really clue you in to where a problem is when you have absolutely no idea where it could be. So let's see. Um, for iPhones, one of the great things that we recently um, had added to our ZXW tool. So let's click over ZXW and let's get rid of the logo and let's get rid of this text box so that we can see ZXW and I'm gonna move things down a little bit. Here we go. So in ZXW, let me click over there and show you guys this. In ZXW, we can click on iPhone 7 Plus and there's two different versions. There's a, there's a little bit different. The two different versions, one has more information than the other one. So this one has less information. You can kind of see this is not, not very uh, well labeled. If I click on something, it probably doesn't know what it is. Yeah, it doesn't really know what it is. It's not well matched to the schematic. All right, so this is the iPhone 7 Plus version that we're gonna use Luckily for us, it is a match in the image area. All right, so let's get this big. We're gonna go to the LCD connector right here, J4502. And now we'll go over and connect connecting seat resistance, which means somebody nicely put diode mode readings right there in ZXW for us to use. And so this is a really great time saver. Now these are a little bit different than the two boards that we just measured. Let's see if I can, if, if you guys are able to see that. I think so. Let me see if I can make it one click bigger. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So we just measured these, these uh, five points. This is on the bottom. There's ground, same as on our connector that we're measuring, ground. And then that first pin, ZXW says, is uh, <laughs> some kind of font that I'm going to guess means OL in somebody's language. And then number two, remember we measured it at like 0 0.468, 0 0.47, and it is saying 515. That means 0.515. Uh, the next pin three, we measured as OL, and look on ZXW, ZXW says it's 2,823. That, that's pretty much OL. So if you asked the multimeter, hey, at what point do you just say too much resistance, open line, uh, the answer is going to be, uh, at about 1.78 or you know something like that. So 2.8, 2,000, that is pretty much OL. So we'll consider that a match. And then we measured that fourth pin and we got you know 0.47 again. And it, you can see that this one, uh, that this pin, ah, that that uh, pin on ZXW's diode mode measurement says 516, meaning 0.516. That's really close to the other pin uh, uh, two. That was 0.47. So we're going to kind of say that overall the boards that we actually have here in hand are running a little bit less. You know, instead of 0.515, we're getting 0.48. That is 
close enough. Now you can get trolled by small differences in diode mode that are meaningful. So you kind of have to get an experience base. But in general, if you're measuring across the board, everything that's supposed to be about 0.5 will be 0.48, then that's close enough. All right, so let's continue down this um, same connector then. And let's see if we can actually do this kind of all at once. Let's pull this up a little bit. There we go. So we can still see that in the YouTube screen. So we've got multimeter and we've got diode mode in ZXW and we've got the microscope view all at once. So let's pick up where we left off and you help me find, hopefully we'll find a line that is a mismatch between ZXW, which is essentially our known good board. All right, so I got to get red probe on ground. So there's my red probe back on any ground. And I think we did one, two, three, four, five. So let's do number six. And number six says 0.493. And up there, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's 0.5, close enough. So the next one, two, three should also be close to 0.5. So let's see. That one, 0.47, okay. Next one, 0.469, okay. Next one, 0.406, okay. And then we have a bigger number. So in, in ZXW, it tells us that it's going up to 0.65. So we would expect the next pin to come up higher than our 0.47s. And it does, 0.535. So that's kind of like scaled about the same. All right, the next one after that is 0.568. So let's check on that. And we're getting, oh, I think I'm off a pin. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 is OL, is it OL? This is where it kind of gets tough, very hard. All right, so pin 11 is high and then pin the, not pin 12, but the 12th one in the bottom row is OL. So let's see if that's a match. Um, one, two, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So 12 OL, and this is 1.5, so 1,500. So we'll say that's pretty much OL. And then this 0.568, um, seem to be, uh, let's see, it, does it go too high and then the OL? So let's, let's look for that pattern. There should be two that are a little bit higher, higher OL. All right, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then on the 10th pin, we should get higher, higher OL. All right, so let's check on that. So let's get to the 10th pin on our board. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, 10 is 0.536. 11 is higher. And then this one is, hey, it's almost an exact match. 1.48. All right, and then the next one uh, I keep losing my place. My little pin knocks off. All right, next one, 0 0.601, and ZXW says 642, close enough. Next two should be OL. OL, next one, OL. There we go. Okay, so now we still have in this connector, we'll start from the bottom side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so let's scroll down on ZXW and see if we can measure those last nine pins. And hopefully, I mean, something has to come up as different. If it doesn't, you know, then we need to go look to see, well, where else is image handled that doesn't end up at the connector? Maybe the GPU or something like that. But a lot of image lines end up at the connector that control things like, can I detect an LCD? Can I reset the LCD? Can I sync the LCD? All of those data lines, any, any kind of a short to ground or open line can fuck up your image if you have a problem in any of them. So that's why this is a great method. All right, let's click over and see if we can scroll. All right, let's see if you guys can see that. Okay, so let's continue on. 
Let's see if we can find those two OL pins again and then just kind of keep on keeping on. So we're looking back to find our spot. So we should get two open lines in a row. So it was somewhere around here. That was 0 0.6. There we go, OL, OL, great. So now we're back on track and 0.525. Now 0.528, to me that seems less than 0.794. So that kind of, that one jumps out at me. 0.535, when it's supposed to be 0.794, that may actually be a difference. So let's come back to that one. So the one that's after the two OLs, OL, Wait, I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, here we go. OL, OL. That's low. All right, so we'll remember that one. All right, let's keep going. OL. You're not supposed to be OL. That's totally wrong. OL, OL. That's our two OLs. Then we're supposed to get 0.794. And we're getting 0.537. Then the next one is coming up as OL when it's supposed to be 0.796. That's a huge difference. OL, open line, instead of 0.796. The next one should be ground. It is. All right. The next one after that is coming up. Let me move this down so that it's... We're sure we're getting a measurement. And I lost my spot, of course. Oh, well. The one that seems a little low. The one that's inappropriately oh, well. Ground. And then after ground, we should have 0.618. It's oh, well. All right. I don't see how this this seems like I'm on ground. You're not supposed to be OL. All right, continuing on. Let's make sure my multimeter is getting readings. Okay, wrong. All right, point six oh five instead of six one eight. Correct. 514, correct. And 605, correct. All right, so we have kind of cleared out these bottom three. Oh, you guys can't see that. These last three seem to match, and then we had like a chunk there of ones that really seem like they're not correct. So now I want to really compare that between my known good board since i have a known good board it's a really strong tool and i want to i want to kind of check in on that so let me see if i can pull my chat window back up all right any news about piss cat uh piss cat i think i'm pretty sure has herpes uh piss cat i have a call into the vet so but piss cat is so sweet um all right so now we're going to like kind of directly compare to our known our uh, known good. So let's start here at the end where maybe it makes more sense. And let's measure those last three. All right, multimeter, are you working? All right, let me get into ground. Was the last one OL? Oh, well. Every now and then it's hard to, no, it's not supposed to be OL. Oh, well. All right, so 0.515. I'm going to measure out here. All right, what was this board? Let's see. Yeah, wow, my bad board is coming up open line for some of these down here. Unless I'm not getting my probes on there to take the measurement, but I feel like I am. Let's try it again. Let's kind of dig into this ground a little bit more in case it's not making good connection. So I'm going to touch ground. Touch ground. Let's pull that up. 
Touch ground. All right, touch connector. All right. Well, it is a water damaged board. Okay, so that is not, this is also kind of coming up as a, not a match on ZXW. We should look that line up and see, see uh, what does it do. All right, this next one is coming up 0.515 on the known good board. And this one is coming up OL, which is also wrong. So let's go over to the bad board here. I guess it's bad to have your known good board be some other water damage data recovery that, that you just did. But that's what we have. All right, so this one we're getting 0 0.605, 0 0.513, and 0 0.605. You know what it could be? I think that these boards are actually um, different, the two different versions. Maybe that's not true. Let's check. Let's check on the back. So we might have some differences based on that. Hmm, that looks like a match. That all seems like a match. That all seems like a match. But I think that these two boards are, are you guys the same? Yeah, you guys look the same. Okay, all right, so then let's continue Continue on. So we're, we're less interested in, in lines that where our bad board matches ZXW um, and the known good board does not match ZXW. So let's find, let's see if we can start with lines that, that don't match ZXW or the, bad, or the known good board. All right, so we'll skip up a little bit here. And so let's do this number four. Number four on the bad board is 604, 519, 604, ground. All right, so let's find that ground, and then it should be 604, 519, 604, and then we'll forget about those three on the end. All right, at least for now. We may have to come back to that. All right, so let's see. Um, all right, here's our grounds pin. And then this one on the bad board, we are getting open line. ZXW has 0.618 and our good board <coughs> also had 0.618. So there's a good difference. Ground, 0.604, ZXW says 618, and then over here, ground and open line. That is a definite mismatch. All right, next one. All right, seems like an open line. Let's go over to good board. Ground, and this one, 0.519. And ZXW has um, 0.572. So again, ZXW and the good board seem to agree, and bad board is open line. So that is another um, thing to investigate. All right, and then uh, I think after that, our board kind of matched ZXW at least. So we had... Round, wrong, wrong. All right, open line on that one as well. And ZXW says it should be 0.618. So let's go back and measure good board. Which one of you guys was, was uh, ground? Ah, multimeter went to sleep. Wake it up. Every now and then you get trolled. Okay.
All right, so instead of open line, this one, I can't see it anymore. I moved the multimeter. I got to move over. Got to move over some chat. All right, let's see. Oh, you guys can't really see that very well either. There you go. A little bit better. My on-screen multimeter. Number three after ground is 0 0.604. Yeah, and then it's got this weird open line that's not a match to ZXW. All right, ground. All right, number three is 604. Let's check the bad board. Which one of you guys was ground? Ground, open, open. And you, you're not supposed to be open. And then we get a match to ZXW match to zxw match to zxw okay survey says we have found some lines that have a problem they're open line so that's great so now we've got something that we can chase something that we can go find out if there's a reason i don't care about lines that are not matching between my bad my known good board that does produce an image and accept touch because i just recovered data off of it so if it's some kind of line for some kind of data that is apparently not essential for touch or image and i don't care about it so let's drill down on these three lines here that seem to be a mismatch between our known good zxw and our bad our bad one is open line on those and see um let's see what's this is this live live yes this is live live both boards are somewhat hoopa juped. We say janky. Um, let's look back at the good board just to see, just to remind me. Oh yeah, okay, that's not a surprise. <laughs> look at the, the bad board was also damaged in the same way. It's shit pile down here in the image area. All right, and look at how shit. This is the this one here is the um, is the good board. Um, this, this is the one that I just recovered. So this is the one, yay, the good one, yay. Uh, so up here around chestnut and the chestnut area caps, those were spared in this, in this board. Um, and the, uh, a lot of this still looks great. So this was just a real shit storm right on the very, very tip end of the board. So any one of those um, resistors, if it's for some line that goes to the LCD connector, then that's going to be why we're getting different values on our quote good board. Doesn't look that great right now, um, but we do know that this board makes image. So now we know what we care about. All right, let's look up and see if we can find a problem. Let's see if we can find a problem. So now we're going to look up, um, okay, where do those lines go? So let's get rid of the microscope so that we can really look at ZXW uh, together. All right, so let's see. What, was, what were the ones with the, the problem? Um, I don't stream on Twitch anymore because there's too much complaint about lag, which apparently is not solved by not streaming on Twitch. No, I, th I thought that that might have a uh, restream platform in common, so I quit doing that. All right, maybe ZXW is not 100% correct. Maybe. Um, let's see. I would have been inclined to solder a wire on the ground of the board and have a crocodile clip attached to the, to the multimeter. That sounds like more work. Um, you can just press it anywhere you want into a ground. Okay, let's see. Uh... Oh, I can't click there. All right, so we had a fault after ground. Okay, that makes a hell of a lot of sense, but not that interesting. What line is this? It is called, uh, you can't see it with my, my cursor off there. It's called PPLCM Backlight Cat 1 Connector. Well, we already know that the backlight driver, at least one of them, is off the board. So it's not a surprise that we're going to have an open line because there's no complete circuit there. It doesn't have 
uh, any destination. In fact, I think probably the filters are missing as well. So that is not that, that fabulous to find. We don't really care about backlight. So this one is not as interesting and that's kind of a bummer because we wanna find things that we can chase down and try to fix to bring back image. Chasing down a backlight cathode line is not gonna help us have image. We wanna troubleshoot image before backlight. All right, next one is PP LCM backlight anode connector. All right, and that's actually not that much of a surprise either because now I realize that the, the good board also only has half backlight and it's the other half. So that's gonna be why it's gonna come up open line on those. So at least it makes sense. All right, so we have uh, backlight cat two uh, and then we have backlight the other cat one on the other driver. And then this is the anode line off of the other driver and the other cat too. So all of those are not really helpful for us at all because um, they don't really point to any kind of a problem other than backlight. But it is a great success of the method. So let me just make sure that's crystal clear for everybody. Why are we getting open lines on the good board and the bad board um, in a different way from ZXW? And the answer is pretty obvious when we look on the board itself. So if we were to, let's look at ZXW actually, and let's kind of follow one of these backlight lines. So uh, on the on the good board, for example, ah, I keep trying to click in ZXW within OBX. All right, so here's one of the lines that is coming up. Well, one of these, let's pick that one. Let's pick anode. Here we go. On the good board, the one that does produce image, this line is coming up as open line instead of having a normal match ZXW reading of 0.574 or thereabouts. So let's kind of drill out of ZXW and see where does that go? And we could look this up on the schematic as well. So I don't see it anywhere else on the top side of this board by the connector. So let's look down here on the bottom side and I can see, okay, it goes to a test point and it goes through a filter. So what's on the other side of that filter? A couple of caps. And over here, where does it go? It goes to some more caps, and then it goes to a glass diode and a regular diode, another cap. And if I click on uh, the, the other side of the diode, it comes from the backlight driver chip itself, the, this particular backlight driver. Now let's look at that board. So let's get our microscope view going. So let's get, <coughs> our quote unquote good board and if we flip it over look at that that particular backlight driver is not even on the board because I took it off so that I could try to get the other board to have backlight so that is at least makes sense and it kind of tells us that our method is working even without looking for any kind of physical damage we were able to find a fault an open line and lo and behold it is an open line makes a lot of sense so i have hope but we need to still find a match that's relevant to image so none of that makes any sense for image that's all backlight so let's look back so i'm going to put i'm going to go back to zxw and and uh, see if we can kind of uh, find a difference again. I thought that there was another one. I'm kind of spaced out a little bit since I've been uh, doing this for a long, long time today. So let's look back. We had another one. Maybe somebody in chat can remind me where it was so that I don't have to go on a big hunt. I feel like there was an open line. Yes, it wasn't it right after the, um, the two, there were supposed to be two open lines. Let's check. Is it this one? Does it go open, open, and then 0.8? That was, I think, a difference that we found. So let's see. Let's check on which one is this. This is the bad board that we're trying to fix. So let's go back to red probe on ground. And let's see if we can find, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine from the bottom. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight. I already lost the G's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Point five, two, five. And then is this OL? And then the other OL? 
and 0 0.6. So let's make ZXW bigger. And that's where I said, you know, I think that could potentially be a little bit low. So let's tick this up one notch and see if that helps. All right, so it's supposed to be 0 0.794 in that spot. And we are measuring, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We are measuring 0 0.5, 0 0.5 instead of almost 0 0.8. Even though the ZXW numbers are kind of a little higher over across the board, 0.8 versus 0.5, that's a lot. Let's check our other board that does make image and see if it is closer to the 0.8 or not. All right, so these two boards seem to be kind of close to each other when we've been taking these readings so far. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, that is that seems to be kind of a match. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, 0 0.528, 0 0.528. And then is that the one that's next to open line? Open line. All right, so then here's where I kind of would think, you know, that ZXW may be, uh, you know, may be wrong. I mean, these are just user generated values. Let's see, what's the next one down? 0.544, all right. And then ground, and then 0.6 something. All right, 0.6, 42, open line pretty much. 0.54 and then a big number. No, it's not that big. 0.556 instead of 650. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm loving the ZXW compared to having a known good board. What do you guys think? 0.480. All right, so let's go. Let's see if we can kind of just compare between these two then and find a difference. Let's see. All right, so on this board, 0.525, OL, let's get that right, ground, what, ground, OL, all right, that's not cool, nothing's supposed to be OL, ground, OL, and then we get to that 0.523, And then we were supposed to get to OL. And then we're supposed to get to another OL. And then that seems to be a match after that. That's a match. That's a match. All right, so the one adjacent to ground, according to ZXW, shouldn't be anywhere close to OL. All right, so let's check back on this board. All right, there's ground, 0.518. That's lower than ZXW, but the adjacent pin are both kind of coming up in the 0.5 range instead of the 0.796. All right, so that, I think, is a big deal. What do you guys think? It's got a 0.8 in ZXW, a 0.5 on the good board, and OL on the bad board. So that sounds like it could be one that is relevant for image. Yeah. 0.522. That guy. So the guy that's one up from ground. All right, ZXW, tell us. Is that yet another backlight line? Dun dun dun. dun. Who are you? Sweet. Yay! All right, here's something we can work with. All right, so what the heck is this? M-I-P-I-A-P -I -I to LCM CLK connector N. What the heck is that? 
All right, so when you look at that, you can see AP application processor, two LCM screen, liquid crystal matrix probably, clock, ooh, clock sounds really data-y and really potentially important, screen, CPU, two screen, clock, and data. That sounds a super hot one for image. It doesn't sound like backlight at all. It's something that our good board has. Uh, it's something that our ZXW has. And it's something that this one has open line. So let's go on a hunt and see if we can drill down and find out where this bad boy has gone wrong. So let's get rid of the microscope and look at ZXW. All right, goodbye microscope. All right, so let's go back to ZXW and say, tell me more about yourself, good old MIPI AP to LCM clock connector line. Where do you, where do you go from here? All right, so we'll look around here on the top side and I don't see any other spots. So then let's see if ZXW has that linked up to something on the bottom side. All right, and it does. And it's in our area of fuckery, hooray. And this little dude here looks like one of these data chokes, which is kind of like a double filter. So uh, usually these, yeah, so this is this one line kind of connects pad two and pad three through that component. So that's not supposed to be an open line. This dude is basically a filter. We could take this filter and kind of, you know, plug it in here and kind of get pretty much the same effect. All right, so this is the line. M I P I A C A P to L C M clock N. And let's guess that this is going to be clock P. All right. And we didn't have a problem on this line. So here's my question. If this in component is in fact the reason we have an open line, or maybe it is this joint here between pad three and the, co the component itself, meaning that we have a broken open drawbridge, an open line between the CPU and it doesn't get all the way out to the connector anymore. So at the connector, we get open line because we have no path through that component. If that's true, then that means if we were to just take our probe and measure over here on the CPU side of that line, then we would get back to that 0.5. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see if we can do that. Let's try to take that measurement. All right, so we have to find this little dude on the, on the board. And what we're going with right now is that that guy is himself the cause of an open line, meaning his number three pad, kind of connector side, will be open line. And maybe his other pad would be um, diode mode, showing the normal resistance in that line back to the CPU. Let's find out. So let's get rid of ZXW now, and we'll bring back the microscope. OK, so let's bring this. E let's move this up so that we can see it all right so it's back on this side of the board over here and he's in an area of general fuckery in fact i've already been here because i i found that these filters for for image power lines i always check power before data power is easier to fix than data as you can see. So I already put these filters on these image power lines because they were really shit and they were, you know, corroded underneath and they themselves were open lines. So it's really, really intriguing and uh, feels good that we have a potential problem here. All right. So now if this is the problem, we will still be open line here on the LCD side of this. So let's find out if we are. If we're, if we're not, I'm going to probably be bummed out. I might even cry. All right, what is it? Oh, 0.521. Okay, great. Oh, maybe this is the connector side. Ooh, yeah, there we go. So it looks like this top side is the one that goes out to the connector, and it's open line, and this must be the CPU side because I'm getting back to that 0.521, which is a match to our good board. So we don't have a, a drawbridge. We have a broken open line let's make it easy for troubleshooting not for repair troubleshooting data only let's just take that sucker off and lay some wire so that we can see with our eyes that those connections are actually made all right so we are going to just take off this little filter and we will put up with any kind of janky image that we might get because all we need to do 
is to be able to recover data. All we need to do is to get image back so that we can realize there's a touch problem or some other nonsense. All right, so we're going to just kind of heat this up. Wow, these things are like, he, he, look at, look at that. Like, damn, that is salt water. Look at that. It's just corroded away. There's nothing left. That's why I'm, I'm, this board looks like this. I'm hesitant to put it in the ultrasonic when it, it does boot right now and it just doesn't have image. I think the likelihood of making this board worse is very high. All right, let's tin these so that I can get this sucker off. Let's get some fresh flux on there and give it a whirl. Wow, look at that filter up there. Oh, you can like see that it's totally blown. It's one of the backlight filters. Oh yeah, look at that. His foot is black. In fact, I'm going to clean that off just so that you can see what salt water corrosion looks like. And, you know, I'm really kind of impressed by the old 7 Plus that it went into a salt water pool filled with salt water. And it, you know, if it were any other phone, it would look like this all over the board. But this one, you know, it's just really here at the bottom of the board and that's it. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's just a train wreck. In fact, it might have even been a better approach to just say windshield wiper this whole end of the board and rebuild it and not, not do all this stupid troubleshooting. What a waste of time. Okay. Let's see if we can rejuvenate that pad enough to get a wire on there. And I will see if chat is talking about anything relevant to iPhone seven plus seven yeah seven plus data problems and not you know please bro me fixes for my phone we'll see uh what uh okay people talking about other stuff jessa posted connect to wi-fi when apple connection made lock started to work oh i totally want to talk about that fucking trolled who 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 are you lawrence osborne plagued by an issue where i was doing some backlights and after lock would only work when the phone is locked once you put in the lock code it wouldn't work just supposed to connect to Wi-Fi when Apple connection made luck started working again. Who are you, Lawrence Osborne? All right. Don't stream on Twitch anymore. Uh, somebody's asking about some other irrelevant phone. I think the windshield wiper would have been better. Yes, I'm totally regretting the windshield wiper. I thought it would be a great... I, I, I talk about diode mode all the time, but I've never really made a video of why you use diode mode, what it is, what you're actually measuring, and why it's a really strong tool. So I wanted to kind of get that out there. Also, because I'm really getting, I'm really getting ready to lose my shit about the prior repair attempt fuckery that is is coming in here in fact twice this week i had to issue a um what i called a restoration fee which is um if somebody has done so much damage to the board that it it complicates the repair so that it's going to consume more time than is reason than it would have otherwise then i'm going to have to start issuing a uh, a non-refundable fee if if you want to get time out of us to look at your board if you took it to somebody who did damage to the board you know so like this this one went to another shop they took off backlight drivers but that's not unreasonable backlight drivers is a reasonable thing to do they did fuck up the shield a little bit and i had to replace some components but those didn't it didn't complicate the problem at all so that doesn't bother me 
Um, but the the ones that I saw this week, you know, where there was, you know, somebody's replacing Tigris for absolutely no reason and pulled off essential pads. Well, I can't diagnose a, a no power phone without Tigris. So I got to do pad repair just to be able to say, what kind of fault does this phone have? That's not cool. And another one. Oh my, my fucking God. It came in with just all kinds of shit work on it. The thing that, there we go. Now it can make a wire. Or the thing that really drives me crazy is when people take it, boards that are important. Somebody's data is important enough that they're willing to send out for international data recovery. When they walked in your shop, Locally, you know, you it's your job to recognize that and to not do crazy, you know, gee, I'll give it a try. Why not? I watch YouTube. How hard can it be? Don't do that to somebody's important data. Do that on some eBay phone. Fine. If you want to learn, fine. That is all fine. But don't do it on somebody's board where they are desperate for their data. It is not, so, uh, you, you don't go learn how to do board repair on somebody's data recovery phone. That's just nuts. There's plenty of phones for you to, to practice that on. So this one came in with cumulus off by an entire row. Every chip somebody had stupidly braided underneath so the chips don't have anything to adhere to. So they're just sitting sitting there with open lines. And that that was just just really not cool. All right, but the worst, I had to listen today to Sunday, take a call from a guy anxious about his data recovery job that came here. And it was one that we looked at last week and opened it up. It was a great little teaching example during the course week, um, but somebody had been under the mistaken newbie assumption that there was a short on the GPU power rail. GPU power rail will always measure low in diode mode, but not full short to ground. So if you get this, if you're using continuity mode to, as your only method of short detection, you're going to constantly think, hey, this line is short because it beeps to ground on both sides of every cap. Um, but it is, it is, um, it is not short. So this person didn't know that and went ahead deciding to take off every single cap on the GPU power line. And they did it by using heat. And they did it using heat directly on top of the CPU. Was never their problem, never had any business doing that. And we spent some time on that board and diagnosed it with a dead CPU. All CPU power rails were present, CPU output, nothing. Dead CPU because some idiot thought a line was short that is never short. So that is why I encourage people to understand things like diode mode as an alternative for short detection. All right, Jim says, are you sure on those jumpers? What do you mean? I had the impression they should be vertical. Yeah, they should, I, I, let's drill out. All right, how does that look to you? So this is the view of the board that kind of matches ZXW. I, I always turn the board to be comfortable for your hand. I'm left-handed. So this is kind of comfortable for a right-handed person. So I'm going to turn it like that so that I can get those pads cleaned up. So hopefully that looks uh, better to you guys. I really can't tell how big tolerances can be there and how current sensitive those certain lines are. So what do you think? Is there a relative tolerance between different meters? Yes. You know, you, you kind of have to, like we can see here on the good board and on the bad board, most of these lines are kind of coming up almost in a certain scale. Every time it says 0.515 on ZXW, this meter's reading 0.476. But every line that's 0.515, it always reads 0.476-ish. You know, if it read 0.1, that's bad. All right. Uh, okay, all the best people are left-handed. I agree. 
Okay, now let's see what happens if we go back and flip this sucker over. And let's measure next to the ground pin now and see if it matches. Wake it up, multimeter. Let's see if we rejuvenated our, our diode mode measurement back to uh, same as the other board. All right, so. All right, so it's the one, uh, the one next to ground. 0.521, hooray! <coughs> and over here, it's the one next to ground. 0.521, two, 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 three, close enough. All right, so now we, now we know that we had a problem on a line that we think is really relevant for producing image. We don't care about backlight. We can fix backlight later or never. We're, we care about image. So we looked at all of the lines in that connector. That's not gonna be every single thing on the whole device that's relevant, relevant for image, but it's gonna be a lot of them. If we looked at the schematic themselves, we'd see all of these lines and you could figure out where they go and you could kind of guess, all right, those are probably image, that's probably touch, those are probably image, that's probably image power, that's probably image data, that's probably screen detection. And we were able to kind of look at them all at once with a multimeter. And from there, we found a handful of lines that had a mismatch between either our board and ZXW or our board and the bad board. And what we found was that this whole chunk of them were all backlight lines, which when you think about it makes a lot of sense since this board and the other board each have one of the backlight drivers off. So this board is gonna be open line on all of these backlight lines. The other board is gonna be open line on all of those backlight lines. So not interesting to solve the problem of no image. So we looked again to say, is there anybody else? <clears throat> and there was one line that I thought might be low, kind of up towards the top of the connector, but we found this one line to start with that was clearly open line, like goose egg, open line. <laughs> Drawbridge is gone. Open line between the connector and a line that goes to the CPU, talking between the CPU and the screen with lines like, with names like clock and screen LCM and CPU AP and MIPI, which is an image uh, data transfer protocol how LCDs work. That seems like, oh man, that's definitely got to be there for image and it's definitely open line. So what do we do? We traced it on ZXW, found uh, the spot where we had a little filter that was corroded all to hell. And now it is time to see whether or not that did anything at all. So let's, um, I guess we'll just leave that here. Let's see what happens if we test. Time to test. And since we had, uh, did anybody say, hey, hey, my, um, hey, my jumpers are good? All right, let's see. Nobody said that, but yeah, I think, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure. That seems to be good to me. All right. Um, so besides it taking longer, what's the advantage of using diode mode versus resistance? Well, one is that the whole, it, it makes sense to use whatever is kind of the accepted standard that everybody else is using around you so that everyone's speaking the same language. Otherwise, you, you could say, I just think French sounds better, so I'm just going to start speaking French. It's technically correct but it's gonna be hard for other people to understand you. So in fact, resistance is probably a better number, but um, it is not what people, it's not the language people speak. People speak red probe on ground diode mode. And as, as a result, you know, like ZXW, if those numbers are all resistance, then we'd all use resistance um, because they don't really mean anything to you. 
I'm going to look like an idiot if they're like, uh, the reason why the ZXW, ZXW numbers are a little different is because that is resistance. It just happens to be what it is. That would be hilarious. All right. Okay. Yes, your jumpers are good. Yes. I knew that it was smart way back when I made Jim a mod on my channel. What happened to all the mods on my channel? Did I like make everybody? What happened to Lewis's great modathon where everybody became a moderator? What happened to that? All right, with the seven plus, I've definitely learned the hard way that um, you gotta get your front camera and your home button on or some kind of home button and some kind of front camera or else the thing We'll boot loop. This is a stupid screen to try because it doesn't... I'm already committed to it now, but I doubt that we're going to also have backlight. That <laughs> The likelihood that even the half backlight that's potentially going to work is going to work is low, but we'll see. If not, I'll try my janky screen. All right, show me something do something. All right. So I don't see anything on here. I'm going to guess that it's booting. Um, I don't even think I'm going to wait for it to detect because what I want to do is ask the question, do I have image? Not do I have image and backlight? I am highly skeptical of ever having backlight on this. So let's get this screen off. which is a giant annoying delay of game, just like most, most of the stuff I do. All right, and we are gonna use their screen. Now this screen looks like a piece of shit. Why would anybody ever use this as the good screen to test? And um, it's because this phone, faux shizzle, is never gonna be a phone again. You could probably wipe this on some fries if you wanted to have a unique way to to salt stuff. So what I did was I separated the screen on this one so that I can take a peek and see whether or not we have image independent of whether or not we have backlight. And first I tested it, of course, with the good board that does produce image. And I know that this screen will produce image if it has a good board. So that's why this screen is a better test screen for now just to ask the question of do we have image all right so there is the front camera connected whatever's left of the home button is connected all right LCD is connected, and I think, yep, it is ooh, much later than I thought it was. So whether or not we have image, I think this will be our stopping point. So let's find out. Let's find out if it's going to be solved one problem only to find another problem behind it, or are we at the end of the problem road? All right, so let's see. So I'm going to try to lift this up and I'll let you guys know I don't have my hand camera set up do we have image nope black <laughs> fail no image now let me this time I do want to make sure that it's actually booting so I'm gonna wait to hear iTunes detect this phone it would be great if maybe just the battery is run down since I am on a battery with this one. All right, let's see. You don't need some newbie repair guy to tell me your jumpers are good. All right. You can't measure a semiconductor in resistor mode. <clears throat> That's true. You can't measure, um, you can't measure individual dudes like, hey, is this diode good? Um, but I think to be clear, the question you're asking is the, the infrastructure of the road. It's like a line level question. And that's, a, that's something that we have to distinguish with uh, beginners all the time 
is kind of separating your thinking into kind of tiers. Am I looking for a dude? No, that's, a, that's like a component level problem. Am I looking for a line? I'm looking for a line that's got a problem. So a line level investigation. So diode mode is really great for line level investigation where your, your approach would be, let me cast a wide net and say, who are all of the possible lines that might be relevant to my problem? And a lot of that's going to be guessing where, you know, what if your problem is camera? Any line that has the word cam in it in any way is on your list of possible bad lines. Diode mode is your tool to go through that list and to try to come up with candidate lines, line level testing. Once you know the line, then you're at dude level testing and you're trying to figure out which dude on the line is either bringing it down, so a chip or a cap, who can cause, who can become a wire to ground or a partial wire to ground, or what kind of drawbridge is blown up. So you're going to look around to see what's the cause of an open line. All right, I'd like to hear this connect to iTunes, and let's see. It's kind of good that it's not because it might mean that it, this battery is making this thing. Uh, not boot or maybe the dock isn't connected well or something like that. All right, so let's see. All right, let me look into my assembly here and see if there is a dock or easy to understand reason why this is not working. I'm going to look into this a little bit. It's also possible this board, I think, is so beat that it could, you know, any one of these really bad caps could cause some secondary failure, which is why I didn't put it through, uh, you know, some heavy duty cleaning. Ooh, the board is hot. That's not good. That's not good. All right, let's look and see if we can kind of find out why. All right, is any of this stuff relevant to that? Let's clean this up and make sure we didn't cause a problem. Whenever you have a problem, you want to kind of go to, what was the last thing I did? You know, did anything get crazy with these, with where I was? Did I touch any kind of, you know, spot and expose some ground or something like that? I don't think so. I'd like to get this piece of a cap off. There we go. Did anybody else that was important just recently get knocked off? I don't think so. Looks like shit, but it looks like the same shit that I've been looking at. So I don't know about that. All right, so I'm going to stick it on. Let me actually take a diode mode line level measurement of our VCC main power rail. Let's do that. Let's see if one of these really horrible looking remaining caps has finally decided to become a wire and is making this whole thing not boot. Hmm, who was VCC main? You were, aren't you? 0.331. Yay, that still seems okay. Let's measure our other guys. What if it was asking for chestnut output? Let's see. That seems normal. 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 All right. Let's look. As we were probing around the connector, did we mash up anything? I don't think so. I don't think so. All right, let's look back up here. All right. I don't see any reason to suspect that, that anything weird happened. So let's give this another try. Let's give this another try and let's really look with some light on under here and troubleshoot. So I got trolled today big time by iOS 11.0.3. Has this happened to you guys? This was a straight up 5S that came in walking customer, not charging. So he's going to get from us TriStar and a battery. 
And then I updated him because he was on 11.0. And so I kind of got concerned that maybe he had um, like a, you know, app inefficiency or something like that, something that his daughter uses a lot. I kind of got concerned that maybe it was, you know, just had poor battery performance because of that. So I updated him to 11.0.3 and then put him in airplane mode, carried it around testing the, you know, like how fast is this battery draining, etc. And then um, I ended up deciding to also change his charge port. So I get it all back together and it's charging problem seems to be solved, but the stupid power lock button was not working. So it would work to lock the screen, but not unlock it. So you could wake up the phone, but you couldn't slide to power off. You couldn't click, click. It would not lock the, the phone. I tried to use the volume buttons and they also didn't work. And I was like, man, I can't imagine that I tore that stupid flex, but I guess so. So I take it back apart and I overlay a new power flex. Didn't help. What? The, I really was like, there's no way we caused some kind of board level, you know, both the power lock unlock button and volume buttons. No way. Look at the board. Look at the flex. I don't see anything wrong with it. So then I started thinking, you know, could this be some kind of software? Is this something related to like raise to wake not working or something like that? And uh, you know, since I had just upgraded him to 11.0.3. So then he shows up and then I have to be like, good news and bad news. You know, good news, your phone charges and it will hold charge all day. Uh, bad news, half the buttons that you came in here working are not working right now and I don't know why. Uh, so he, I kind of walked him through my thought process and troubleshooting and, um, and then I'm like, I'm just going to put this back together for you because we are going to figure it out and then have you come back in. So I put it all back together, turn on, uh, get off of, of airplane mode, and I turn on Wi-Fi, and now it gets cell service, and then the fucking button started working again. What? Total trolled. I was actually just pissed. So I'm like, oh, there you go. Right there, right there in front of him, you know. Nope, they work just fine. Right after I get done telling you, I have absolutely no idea. So don't let that happen to you on iOS 11.0.3, or who knows, maybe you guys are well aware of this, and I'm the idiot that hasn't known all. Oh, yeah, Justin, it's been like that since 10.1. Who knew? News to me. All right. Man, I would love for this phone to boot and show image. If it is turned into a no boot, that's, like, so sucky because... Troubleshooting, going back to troubleshooting boot is going to suck and it doesn't answer our question. I mean, it, if it boots and, and we don't have image, then at least we know, all right, there's another problem with image. But right now it is not showing image, but I don't know if it's booting. I don't know. And I doubt that I can get my DC power supply, the one that is <coughs> currently right in front of me. <coughs> to make this thing power on. Uh, but I do like the lesson here. I think that everybody should use diode mode. All right, let's see if I can shove this in here and see whether or not this thing is booting or what's up with it. Let's see. Ah, it seems to have a 100 milliamp draw on VCC main. Wah, wah, wah. Very, <laughs> I mean, couldn't be more classic than a shit looking VCC main in the bottom half of the phone that has, that ha it booted before when I was troubleshooting earlier and now just decided that one of those pieces of shit looking caps is going to leak 100 milliamps to ground and that is going to be that's too much of a leak for the phone to to kind of overcome which sucks 
and I don't think I have the energy to fix that right now. Let's see. Let's see if you guys can say, oh yeah, we know all about that stupid thing. Let's see. Um, all right, we talked about that. Bad multimeters that show something completely different. Mm, I don't know. Somebody doesn't like their tech power TP965BT digital multimeter. Uh, so that's a, a, a vote down. All right, let's see. Uh, Kevin wants to be a mod to, to mod all the mods. Okay, fine. How about it? What? Does touch work without image? Almost never. I mean, in, in this case, you know, the, um, the touch and image seem to be dependent on each other. I've never seen a case where image works or touch works without image, although it's, it's possible. All right, you mentioned the previous repair fee. You also mentioned this in a comment on my post about someone saying no to recover data. Yes, exactly. Yes, we're going to we're going to have to do something about the prior repair attempt. I don't mind people trying to of course you're going to take your board apart and see if you can clean it up, use known good parts. That's fine. All you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm a DIY person. DIY is fantastic, but micro soldering, putting heat on the board when you're when you're really risking their data is not cool in my opinion. So let's see. Let's print out a screenshot of the lock screen and place it on the screen. Yeah, we used to beat our heads on that stuff all the time. All right, let's see. Can you teach me in German? Probably not. Uh, somebody's talking about some other phone. A bunch of people are speaking in German. 1103 does have a bug there. But 11.1 .1 fixes that. Great! That's what I can't stand. Like, it take, takes you a half hour to figure some stupid shit out like that, and then it's like, oh, yeah, we fixed it. So annoying. All right. I am sleepy. Me too. You can't mod mods. Oh, look at that. <laughs> All right. Um... So this phone, honestly, I would be, I would be, I would say there's a 75, maybe even 80% chance that the reason why this phone didn't have image was that open line. That open line is definitely going to make it have no image. Um, I confirmed before I started image power. I didn't have any problem with that. No short to ground on any of those 5v7 lines. 5v1 is present. 1v8 is present. So everything was present from the power side. So we were looking for a data fault. We found a data fault. We fixed the data fault. Phone looks like shit. And I think that probably one of the really shit looking VCC main caps that are still on the board um, has started to, you know, kind of just develop a partial short, which is a drag for that to happen before we can just get the data off of this phone. I still think this phone has a really, really good chance of being recovered. Um, so what I'll do is, um, I, I, I got to get out of here for tonight. It's been too long. Um, I will, uh, figure this one out and then I will post a picture in the comments of this phone once we get image working back on it since i know that a lot of times you know these these repairs and i recommend this for everybody you know you solve one problem great you know and then it develops a second problem and it kind of turns into a bigger thing than you that you than you budgeted for at that point you really should put it aside get a fresh problem go take a break go do something else you would be stunned at how many problems we will solve in the morning by looking at like exactly like this. Just kind of leave this here on your desk, go home, watch some stupid movie and then uh, come back in the morning and then you kind of look at it and you're like, oh, it's probably that one cap right there. Bink, done. You know, happens all the time for both me and Mark. All right. So I am off to go be a mom, my little girl's 
uh, are turning seven in a couple of days and it is time to go hang out with them. So I will see you guys next time after I figure out how to hit stop streaming. Ah, where is it? There.